Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tone and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving or family landing and the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. In Grandma's kitchen. It ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen. Grandma's kitchen. Hello everybody <laughs> and welcome to my Cape Breton kitchen. It's Mary Janet here from Tombs and Wooden Spoons and I just want to wish every mom out there a happy Mother's Day and all your beautiful grandmothers happy Mother's Day and to all those who mother happy Mother's Day to you too. You're pretty important but most especially, I want to wish all my daughters Happy Mother's Day, and most especially our daughter Kelly, who, yes, had a baby boy on Friday, and this is her first Mother's Day, and she gave us a brand new granddaughter, and her name is Rosie Marie. She weighed eight pounds and 14 ounces, and we couldn't be happier. So uh, it's a beautiful day that we can say that. And also, we want to remember all of those beautiful moms who have passed away and not, not with us this Mother's Day. I think of many who, uh, who I think of on this day. So. I hope you're all just uh, ready to start this chocolate cake, but I have a couple of other little things that I want to say as well. I, have a I had to write up a reminders for myself, but I wanted to congratulate Linda Calloway Snow. Uh, she was the winner of the Mother's Day giveaway and uh, we're pretty happy for her and uh, we've been in touch and uh, she's uh, going to get one of my new aprons. Aren't they nice? This was designed in part by my daughter, Margie, and then my niece, Margie Beaton, and then along with Brenna, who does did the other aprons that I have been wearing, the, uh, the Cape Breton crew ones. So uh, I've got the orders in, but there's still some things that we're missing, and they're going to be mailed this week. So pretty excited about that. And today, uh, as well, I want to wish a happy birthday, number one, to a special lady up near Antigonish in, in Pumpkin, and that's uh, Anne-Marie Cavanaugh. Happy birthday, Anne-Marie, and happy Mother's Day, right? And uh, she's a lovely person who works in Antigonish and is a very good friend of my sister Bernice in Antigonish. And they lunch every Thursday with my cousin Mary Jessie, and darn it, they haven't been able to do that in a while, so soon, soon. But I hope you have a wonderful day, Anne-Marie. And I also want to say a uh, happy birthday to uh, Ashley Jean. Ashley Jean, I know you are watching and I know you and Heather are making the cake together. And I want to wish you a happy birthday. And you know, there's some people in my family that just think you're the greatest gal and uh, you, you love to have a, a happy day. So I hope you have a wonderful day today too, Ashley. Um, so anyway, that's that's all of those little reminders that I didn't want to forget because at my age I forget everything unless I have it written down or timed or whatever. So uh, we are having two live feeds today. So right now this one is probably going to take us maybe, I don't know, half an hour or something like that from start to finish. Once we put the cake in the oven, I won't be back online with you for an hour and a half because the uh, cake takes about a half an hour to cook and then it takes an hour to cool. And I want to, you know, be in real time with you as we make the boiled frosting. 
And I have a really a couple of good safety tips about that oil frosting that we'll deal with on the second live feed. And um, so first things first, I'm going to wash my hands and I want you to set your oven to 350, okay? Okay, my oven is set and my hands are washed and we're all good and we're listening to Chloris to my favorite CD, Falcha from the Celtic Music Interpretive Center. It's got many of my most loved artists on there and uh, you can buy that CD online, airs and waltzes. So the first thing we're going to do is get our dry ingredients ready and what do I do with the recipe? Okay. We're going to have two cups of flour. So I'm going to do it right along with you. So get two cups of flour, two level cups of flour. And two cups of white sugar. Just use two half cup measures. Okay, that's another half cup. So one cup in total, okay? teaspoons of baking soda. I was just thinking, I wish my daughters a happy Mother's Day. My daughters-in-law, I love you both. Laura, Kelly, thank you for making me grandma's too. I have to mention you. And baking powder, a teaspoon of baking powder. I just buy whatever I can find, but these, this is the kind I like the best. It's the bulk kind that I buy at my local co-op. And salt, one teaspoon of salt. This is a really quick, really quick recipe. It really is. And it's so nice and moist. I don't usually measure my salt, but oh, I better do it today. Yeah, there's a teaspoon. And that's, that's it for the dry ingredients. So just mix that up with my nice pamper chef. Wooden spoon. <laughs> It just kind of, you know, sometimes the, the cocoa will have little lumps in it. Just kind of make sure those little lumps are squashed with the spoon, okay? And 
Perfect. Nicely done. Here we go. Can you see that? Just looks like, oh my God, splashed it all over the table. And you can't let anything go to waste. The table is clean. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming today. I know it's a busy day, Mother's Day and all of that. But it's a different kind of a Mother's Day today. It's you don't have a lot of family to come by and 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 visit and all of that. We make the best of it. Okay, now the wet ingredients. So we will have three eggs, okay? You just put everything in together. You don't mix after every addition. Three eggs, one cup of buttermilk. Now, some of you had, you know, people were asking, what, what would you use instead of buttermilk? And um, you, by now, you would have had uh, those that asked that. You just put a cup of regular milk, and then you add a couple of tablespoons of either vinegar or lemon juice, and just let it sit for I don't know, ten minutes or something like that. So if you don't have the buttermilk, that's what you do. So anyway, I have buttermilk. One cup. There's only a little bit left in this. There's probably, I don't know, maybe a half a cup left because I've been using it. I've made a couple of these cakes. And uh, what, the next time I'm making biscuits, I'll put this in my two cup measure and then I'll fill it up with regular milk. Don't, don't waste anything, right? Okay, a cup of buttermilk, a cup of warm water, okay? Just, just warm, lukewarm water, it's fine. Pour that in there. And a third, a third cup of oil. I just use Crisco fish oil. Whatever you have. Okay. And a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. I got the good vanilla. I got the good vanilla. You know, uh, there's a link on my website for this is J.R. Watkins, but there's a gal that um, I know and love, lovely person, Josephine McCaffrey Carlton, and she sells Watkins now. And uh, so I got few items from her. I got the nice big box of cinnamon. And I got the, the real vanilla extract. No, not extract. Yeah, pure vanilla extract. And um, I got some nice, you know, soapy um, a hand soap for the bathroom. It's so nice and so pure. Beautiful. So teaspoon and half. Okay. Smells good. I don't know. I don't know what this is reminding me of. I don't even be talking about this, but like when I was a kid, like in the 50s, in the early 60s, we used to have a vanilla extract in in the house that the Raleigh man would would uh, would bring to the house and would buy that. And uh, 
And sometimes there'd be, there'd be fellas come around that, you know, kind of like to have a little jillick of, of a drink. And if you didn't have any drink in, they would like to have the vanilla. I'd grab vanilla, so they'd have to hide it. Isn't that funny? <laughs> okay, that's all the ingredients. Now, I'm just going to put this on low and mix it up. That's perfect. Now, we're going to add the dry ingredients a little bit at a time, maybe about a heaping cupful at a time, okay? And it's messy. The powder will be all over everything. So just bear with me and just mix it. I'm going to mix it on low. And then once all of that is added and it's mixed, I'm going to put it on high for two minutes. Okay? Good enough. 
Okay, and that's your cake. But we have some work to do. I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna put this all over here. I'm sure you can see my batter. It's pretty thin. Your batter will be very thin, and that's good. That's good. So I have two nine-inch pans, nine-inch round pans. Now maybe you don't have two inch round, two nine-inch round pans. Maybe you have two eight-inch round pans. You use whatever you can with the extra batter for the if you're using eight-inch pans. Just throw them in, in a muffin tin, make a couple cupcakes or whatever. Or if you're using just one pan and not making a layer cake, you know, you might have a, a two pan or a bunt pan or, you know, one of those, uh, what do they call those pans? I <sighs> can't remember the bottom comes out of, you know, uh, I use it all the time. I can't think of the name. Anybody else like that? <laughs> Anything. But anyway, I am using two nine inch pans. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray the sides only and a little bit um, on the uh, just a little bit probably goes on the bottom and I'm going to take my parchment paper Now, if you don't have parchment paper, I would, you know, I would grease the whole pan. And then I would um, shake flour all the way around the sides on the bottom and, and, you know, tap it with this, tap it with that, and dump out any excess flour. I, I have never had much luck with that. I need to have my parchment paper. So I've doubled up that piece of parchment paper because I want to make two round pieces. So I just got my pen. And I'm going to cut, cut that out. Fit that right in the bottom, just like that. Okay, guys? Okay? Now, you can pour your batter in that, just like that, and put it in the oven for 35 minutes. But I'm going to show you something different. I think I told you a little bit about this last week. We're going to do something different. When when you're cooking a layer cake, you you want you don't want to have that mound on the top that usually the middle rises more than the sides, and and the reason for that, which many of you probably know, but I'm just gonna pretend like you don't know. Uh, when you cook a pan like that in the oven, the outside is going to cook first before the middle. And that's why the middle raises up because it's still raw, even though the outside might be already cooked. It's not gonna rise anymore. It's gonna be cooked where it's at. But the middle is still kind of raw and it's still rising. So you end up with this hump, right? And what happens if you're making a layer cake is the bottom layer, you have to take a, a nice slice off the top to make it, to make it nice and flat and put your frosting on there. And then it's okay if the top piece has a mound on it. That looks just fine, but if you didn't want that. So here's, the the, the professionals have have this call, thing called a cake belt, which they wet and they fit it around the edge of the, of, of the, of the cake plate. And there's a there's an adjustment on there, they pull it tight. And, and the, it's all wet, the, the fab, it's a fabric belt and it's wet and they put it in the oven like that. But I have the homemade version, which I found online a while ago. 
and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, you don't have to do it with me. I'm just going to show you, and if you want to follow along, that's great. You need paper towel, and you need foil wrap. So, for the foil wrap, or for the paper towel, you're going to take your pan, and you're just going to measure a piece of a long piece of paper towel until it's the width until it goes around perfectly around so i'll just cut it around like that so it's just the, the circle of the pan so then you 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 open it up and this is you're going to wet this but you're going to do another one too because we're going to do both pans the same i just measure with this one you want two strips the same size. Perfect. Now I'm going to do each one separately. I'm just going to run them under this cool water until they're, you're just kind of rinsing them out or uh, just a little bit. They're not dripping wet, but they're wet. Okay. So they're not dripping and you're going to open them up carefully and I know some of you are thinking, oh, he's crazy. <laughs> this really does work though. And you know what happens is the, the cake, you know, it still might have a little rise in the middle, but not a lot. And uh, the edges of the uh, the cake on the, on the outside, they're not like hard and crisp, more crisp, that they, they, they really cook nicely. Okay, so that's all like that, and I'll do the second one. And you're going to have a piece of foil wrap uh, a little wider and a little longer. And this one is ripping just a little bit, but that's okay. We'll still use that. So I already had my foil wrap I'm recycling my foil wrap because of the cake I made earlier in the week for the picture. So I have two pieces of foil wrap already done. So I'm going to put the paper towel on there. Okay, so about, can you see that? It's about a, two inches on either end. You don't have to be perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do with the paper towel, I'm going to fold it up until it's approximately about the height of my cake pan. So mine, I'm just going to fold it in half. Then I'm going to fold it in threes. And it's probably a little higher than the pan, but we'll just tuck it in underneath the cake. So just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to cover it with the foil wrap. Okay. And just roll it up. So you've got nice strips. Okay. Now we're going to do the next one. Whoever would have thought of this originally, it's just genius. It really does work. Okay. Now fold it up in half, your paper towel. And then fold it in threes.
Okay, guys. Okay. Now just put it in the middle. Fold it up. All this okay Okay. I made a little spill. Let me wake that up. Okay. Now, the next thing I do, because there's a little bit, you know, the, your baking powder and everything, I just kind of it down on the table and you'll see some bubbles coming up that's what makes the bubbles inside your cake when it's cooked they'll come to the surface let's do that six or seven times I don't know if it works or whatever I do it anyway okay and we're gonna put this around my mine my cake pans have ridges so I'm gonna put it underneath the ridge okay and you'll have an edge and just fold it over and squash it in there it'll be perfect I don't know, somebody's messaging me, but I can't see it. side, stagger them in there. Hold on a second. minutes and I know that 35 minutes works perfectly in my stove but for heaven's sakes use your cake tester I have a, a little cake tester for anybody you can see that and uh, I just put it right in the middle all the way to the bottom and I pull it right back up and if there's any like wet residue you know, you have to put it in for another couple of minutes more, especially if you're not using two round pans. It'll probably take a little bit longer if you're using a bunt pan or, or a tube pan. Just, just 
watch it you know best and uh, I think that's yeah so now I have to tell you so they're in the oven and you're cooking them for 35 minutes and uh, so I'm gonna be back here so it's about 25 to 3 so say let's just say 2 30 so I'll be back here uh, live at 4 o'clock Nova Scotia time. So in, an, in an, about an hour and a half, okay? I'll just start with the music again a little bit so everybody can join in and have time to start. But what I want you to do with your cakes, when they're cooked and you're taking them out of the oven, you're gonna leave them in the pan and you're gonna put them on a nice cooling rack. You're gonna leave them in the pan just for 15 minutes, okay? And then I want you to, you know, go around the edge with a knife and then I want you to just Basically, hold, hold upside down it, and it'll come right on your hand. And put it, take the parchment paper off, and put it back down on your cooling rack, and then it'll be there for about an hour. Okay, and uh, by the time it's nice room temperature or just you know just slightly warm, maybe uh, we'll be making the world frosting. So uh, I hope that nobody's really worried about anything. The kids are out there answering the questions and whatever. Oh yeah, how do you like this, the landscape picture? I think that that's a lot better. And I have my son, Gordy, to thank for that. And we'll see how, if I can keep it going like this. So folks, I will see you at around four o'clock, uh, Nova Scotia time, whatever time that is in, in your area and just in, in one and a half hours. Good luck. Hope the cake turns out delicious and it's a nice moist cake. Okay, I'll see you later. Hi everybody. Hi, hello. It's working. Smile more. <laughs> it's stressful. I feel awful. Okay. I don't know if everybody's back online as as many as we're watching before this I know it's a critical point you want to be with me when I'm making this foil frosting because it's important to so many people who want to learn how to make it so just in case I've, I've um, I'm just going to recap just to, to ease into this again so I put an inch of water in the bottom pan and I have it on boiling and I have now three um, with three egg whites in uh, a deep glass bowl okay so ready set happy mother's day everybody yes thank you thank you okay we're gonna go at this one more time a couple more minutes all right I'm going to add to my uh, egg whites a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, okay? And I'm going to get um, a quarter cup of just cold water. I'm not going to put that in the eggs. I'm just going to have it ready here on the side. Okay, just a quarter cup of cold water. All right, are we ready? Three egg whites, pot is boiling, and uh, a half teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now I'm going to 
start beating this with the electric beater and uh, just gonna bring it to a foam, okay? And just on low. That's enough. So can you see that? It's just a little bit foamy, okay? Now I add, let's add, um, we're gonna add a, a cup and a half of brown sugar. So we'll add a half a cup at a time. And just keep your beater on low as you add it. Okay, you ready for some more? Just until it's combined. You don't have to beat very much. And I'm just going to put the rest of it in now. So that's a cup and a half of brown sugar. And I'm just going to mix it until it's blended. That's great. And now you're going to add your quarter cup of cold water. And you're just going to mix it till it's combined. Perfect. Okay. Now you're going to put it in the top of your double boiler. You're going to bring it over and put it on the top of your double boiler and you're going to turn your double boiler down to the lowest setting i'm going to get, have my vanilla ready you're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla and we're going to set my timer right now for seven minutes okay put it on high
I was just going to stop for a second. I think the recipe is posted on my website if anybody wants to have a look at that. And um, so for somebody, a couple of that have missed, you missed what I'm doing. I put three uh, egg um, whites in a bowl and I beat them till they're foamy, added a cup and a half of brown sugar a little bit at a time and yeah. a quarter cup of water and then put it in the top of the double boiler, okay? <laughs> Finish yet, but shut the heat off on your burner.
dyan. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the table and we're going to decorate our cake. Doesn't it look delicious? I don't know if you can see that. Just looks so yummy. Okay. Spread it over the center. I hope everybody's caught up. sides first. You can do whatever you like. You, it's nice to work with a bunch. Otherwise, you might get some crumbs. I know there's some people out there making boil frosting for the first time. I really hope it turns out for you. A couple people are saying it was their grandmother. Mothers used to make this kind for them. That's pretty special. on the top. so good. What do you think? Does yours look like that? I hope so. I'm going to cut myself a nice big slice and I'm going to put the tea on. I forgot to put the kettle on before. Uh, and look, lots left over for the kids. 
I've got to get over there and see the comments. <laughs> okay, sounds like everybody's doing okay. All right, I'm going to cut myself a slice and I'm going to put it on my real mom's plate. Bring it over here. Over to the side here. Oh, I can't. You have to have a little bit of it. Perfect. Okay. And I have my teacup. My tea is not ready yet, though. And I forgot a fork. Today I have servants. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna taste. Test the first bite. Looks good. Mmm. <laughs> I've got it all over my mouth. <laughs> so delicious. This cake is so moist. That's I think the buttermilk that that does such a good job of that. But anyway, so there's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about uh, now that we're here and having a little time. I, for, I wanted to show you my biological mother. I have a picture of her here. Um, I hope you can see it. This is my mom and my dad. He died when he was, she died when she was 37 and he was only 54. He died a few years later. But isn't she beautiful? She's a beautiful lady. And over here on this page, this is the lady who raised me, Maggie Ann. And this is my mother-in-law, Marie, uh, whom I learned a lot of baking from. Just a, a beautiful lady. And she, she was just such a baker. Mama wasn't, a, a, you know, she just baked the necessities, which I, I've learned from her as well. But this this was a gift that our daughter Margie gave us one Christmas a couple years ago. 
and it's it's actually on the the header of um, my website and on our page but this is this is marie's recipe for homemade lemon meringue pie from scratch and this is her own handwriting and uh, margie was was on etsy and found somebody that would uh, th th that they had this craft and she just had to send her the recipe and they etched it in in her own writing onto uh, this i just that's very special to me and this week donna mcdonald formerly from just down the road dropped by and dropped me off a little gift that she made she crafted a little tunes and wooden spoons uh word here uh, I, I just love it and thank you donna for doing that and the gifts just keep piling in i'm telling you colleen baxter sullivan she's a writer a uh, mystery writer from montreal and we've been chatting back and forth and she uh wanted to gift me uh, her recent uh, collection of books that she, that she's published and uh Lil's Way, Gritty, Yoke, and Jaded. One, a couple of them go together, but I want to thank her publicly for, for that. I can't wait to start reading them. That's such so nice of you to do that. Um, now, uh, what else was I going to say? I, I think that's probably just about it. I didn't get my tea yet, but, but uh, I'll get you to pour it there, Mr. Gordon. This is my son. He's he's home with us after being self quarantined. Him and Amy, and uh, he's my servant today. He made us breakfast and just feeling very small spoiled this Mother's Day. So just need a little hot tea after that little bite. Um, now I want to tell you next week it's going to be a little different next week um mama the mama who raised me she uh she in in uh, probably the the 20s i think i've told you this before she was the dessert lady uh for a wealthy family in boston and when she came home she she brought some of those recipes with her. But one of the one of them was this very versatile pudding slash pie filling uh, that she made, and uh, the it was you made a vanilla pudding with the basic recipe, then you added coconut to make coconut cream pie filling, and then uh, and or you added to the vanilla pudding you added uh, bananas, uh, mashed bananas and sliced bananas to make a uh, banana cream pie. Or if you just wanted a chocolate pudding at the, uh, with the very basic recipe, you added cocoa to it. So that versatile recipe, uh, you can't get better than that chocolate pudding. The kids, it's been a staple in our house from when the kids were little and uh, it was delicious and served warm with a scoop of ice cream. They, they, do, they did love that. As well, besides that versatile recipe, I'm also going to be showing you um, a really wonderful caramel sauce that you can use on bread pudding or on your um, uh, little um, ice cream cake that I make. I use that butterscotch sauce. And as well, uh, Mama also had a, a chocolate sauce that she made and uh, it was, uh, it makes a whole bunch. So I usually only make half of it. So we're going to be making those items next week. So you can join in if you would like. And uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, is hers is more light brown or does it look white? People are wondering. Um, the, the boiled frosting. If you make boiled frosting that has white sugar in it, you're going to have a white um, boiled frosting. Uh, this one is a brown sugar based boiled frosting. So it's going to be of course, it's going to be brown, and um, it's uh, it's you know a, it's a very very light brown, and uh, and it's very delicious. But I've never made the white boil frosting at all. But I know that that's made with white sugar, not with brown sugar. So of course, it's going to be brown if you're using brown sugar. It's going to have that 
tint to it, right? And uh, I actually, I like it even better than the white. And what else? And so the cake, uh, re about refrigerating it, yes, you can refrigerate it if you want. I don't. I do everything wrong, probably. I find it stays nicer and and uh, softer, and um, it doesn't get crystally. Uh, and it's, is it going to last that long? Depends. I I would give it away. This one's going somewhere today. I've made three of these cakes in the last two weeks, and some of it has been given away. But I leave mine on the counter for up to three days. If it's if it's not eaten after three days, it's I don't I don't keep it at all it's gone but it stays nice and it stays moist and i just keep it covered with the glass cover um and and it stays nice and soft like on day three the same as it was on day one any more questions and i did give them the safety talk yeah see my kids are trying to keep me straight but at the beginning uh i talked about the double boiler safety and I hope you all follow that. And please make sure that you have that bottom pot boiling, a high rolling boil. And then uh, when you put the top of the double boiler on, you turn it down to the lowest setting on your burner. And then in the halfway mark of making the boiled frosting, you turn it off. And if you're using a mis mismatched set of pots, uh, if you don't have a double boiler, just be uh, extra careful, you know, don't have it so that they're tightly fitting because they'll get stuck together and that's not, not a good thing. And it will actually cook, it'll cook the, the, egg, the eggs that you're beating if you can't get the stuff out of the top pot if it's stuck to the bottom. Because I've been there and I've done that and you don't want that. Um, I think that's everything, folks. I hope you all have and or have had a wonderful Mother's Day and or just a wonderful birthday Anne marie and ashley uh, i hope you had a great time today and it continues that way and hopefully i will see you next week on next sunday afternoon for the the puddings and the sauces that we'll be making and after that uh there's been a lot of requests for making bread and rolls and so the week after next i'm going to be making bread and rolls so uh we'll we'll try that out uh so anyway there's there's lots of messages there i'll get to them momentarily but uh the recipes uh my son was putting it up on our website and the girls were looking after putting it on uh, instagram and facebook and on youtube and on maybe even on twitter i'm not sure but uh they're looking after twitter too all this technology <laughs> So anyway, okay, thank you everybody and we'll see you uh, next next Sunday. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, Mary Janet here. Thanks so much for watching. I would love if you would hit subscribe, please. And if you'd like to order an apron, you can go to tunesandwoodenspoons.com. Uh, the link is down there in the description. So thanks so much and happy baking.